All right, you're good? Yep. What is up, guys? Jake from One Hive, and I'm here with the next base breakdown video with the man Rex, as always. Rex, I have been looking forward to this one. I know the viewers have. Seeing you destroy this uh, Town Hall 10 was just awesome to watch live, and then I know everybody's going to enjoy hearing your thoughts on it and how you did it. So uh, how's everything going, uh, and are you excited as I am? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, Jake. It's always fun to make these videos, and we've just been crushing it in Clan Wars, so it's it's been pretty motivating for us. Definitely, and it, and I know it's it's rewarding for you because we were talking before the we started recording about how much time you've really spent uh, practicing these attacks, and so I know when one goes right, I know that feels good because it's just it's like like any other attack that we spent uh, you know months working on, and then when it when you when you crush one, it's just like yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there's so, from our previous videos, there's so many different Lamunian techniques, and to master them all, it's it's quite a quite a, an obstacle to do, uh, but once you get it down, once you figure out what you need to look for, and once uh, you really immerse yourself into the army composition, I think it's something that can be a really good skill for you to have. Yeah, you, you've definitely committed yourself to it and, it, and it shows. And before we get started, this base is obviously, it's not a max Town Hall 9, but to me, sort of the cutoff when Town Hall 10, or excuse me, max Town Hall 10, uh, but to me, the cutoff when Town Hall 10s actually become very difficult to three-star is when they've got max uh, Town Hall 9 and higher defenses. Uh, this guy has max Infernos, both set to multi. He has three max Expos. Uh, that it that with all town hall nine defenses that's a pretty tough base most people can't three star that uh, if you're if you're able to do that you're doing pretty good in this guy's humble opinion yeah I, I agree with you it's quite a way to work up and I would encourage anyone who is starting to do Lamunian attacks just work your way up like yeah a best way I think the best way to identify uh, how, how to work your way up is the, the war win bonus. Mm -hmm. Start with something low. Start with a, a lower level town all 10, like 500, 10,000, and then just work your way up to 500 to where it is now. Yeah. Um, I think the highest amount that I have three starred is uh, 50 or 588,000. Yeah. And once you get to that zone, you're getting pretty close to completely max town all 10. Right, close to max. And it's just like when we talked about uh, in, in the video back a while. Uh, it's been a while now about the hardcore clan war mentality the same way we started with town hall nines we didn't start off crushing uh you know max town hall nines with level 25 queen and uh all lego walls that's not how it works you start lower and you progress to that so same thing that's happened in town hall 10 game right now yeah exactly and i think it's important for you to not only build your confidence and skill but it's it's like a, a stepping ladder. If, if you try to jump up too high, you get so discouraged, you'll mm -hmm. stop working on that army composition. Yeah, because just like a lot of things that we show on the cleanup attacks and all that, the difference between success and failure can be very small things. And when it, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong really fast, especially when you're talking about high-level Town Hall 10 gameplay. Yeah, exactly. Let's go ahead and move on into the, the video and what we're yeah. going to look for in Lunian attacks. So as I mentioned earlier, there are many types of attacks. Uh, this base is extremely exposed to Lamunian because one, uh, like you said before, the the base isn't completely maxed on all ten. So this this particular person did not max his air defenses. All of them are level six. Uh, so I, I wanted to expose that. Yep. Um, sorry, I wanted to exploit that. And also, the way he positioned his air defenses are 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 kind of poor. Uh, just like you, this base could be holoed, but Lalunian is just, just because how powerful it is. It's it's much a it's stronger army composition for this type of base. But a, a free spell can get the infernos and the air defenses at the same time. And whenever you can freeze both an air defense and an inferno, uh, it's it's a pretty easy way to Lalun it. Yeah, that, that's big. Uh, and, and I know you're going to get into further on that left side freeze. It's, you get even more value out of it. But just in itself, stopping Infernos and uh, air defenses, uh, given, especially when you've got upgraded freezes, giving your balloons time to get in there and take them out, that, that can be a game changer. Yeah, and there's a little bit of uh, different opinions on what to freeze and where to freeze. 
I know Clash with Predator has released a couple of videos as of late on what buildings can do damage, and so I'm going to go into that detail a little bit further in this video, but probably later on. Cool, cool. All right, we'll get it started. Uh, when you're when you're looking at this base, when you're when you're saying, okay, I'm going to little in this. Uh, Talk to me about what's the first thing you, you're going to do, because honestly, I don't know a lot about this, especially at Town Hall 10. Uh, it's foreign to me, so so walk us through this. What do you, what's the first thing you're noticing? What's the first step? So it's just like any other base that you're trying to break down. you got to identify where you think the traps are and where you think the Teslas are. Uh, if you look at this base, you can see there's not too many double giant bombs or giant bomb locations and Town Hall 10 is a little bit trickier because they don't have to rely on double giant bombs mm -hmm. because how difficult it is to hog at Town Hall 10. Right. So even having separate giant bombs is okay. Um, but on this base, I, I figured the Teslas would be either quad Teslas here. Right. Or maybe two might be over here. Right. Um, so uh, what ends up happening is these, this person had four completely exposed Teslas, and I didn't know that. I think they're at these positions. Was he sort of um, going for a, uh, a lure trap, I'm assuming, because of the way this was set up? Yeah, so I'm going to highlight. So the actual Tesla positions are circled in orange. Okay. But he was going for a lure trap, and... I mean, we've mentioned this in our base building break, uh, videos, and we've mentioned this probably in a lot of base breakdown videos. Having four exposed Teslas, Teslas are one of your highest DPS defenses, and to put all four out makes your base even weaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I would agree with so that. I don't I, think I it's a when, especially when you've got uh, upgraded Teslas. Now, if you're a new Town Hall Nine and you've got an extra Tesla to throw out there that is uh, that's not upgraded, that's not going to give you the uh, it's not the defensive building that it represents. It's not that powerful. Okay, you can get away with, with using that as a trap, but when you've got upgraded Teslas, that's a powerful building just to throw out there. Yeah, good point. Uh, and if you've never done this before, click on every single one of your defenses. Figure out and memorize. Uh, this is a skill every skilled raider should be able to do if they haven't already, is to know which defenses put out the most damage in a certain amount of time. So like all, right off a of heartbeat, you should know what a level 11 cannon does compared to a level 11 archer tower. These two are the same, but um, compare that to like a level, this, this ends up being a level six Tesla, um, but compare that to like a level seven and a level eight. So that's all stuff a good raider should be able to tell. Right. Um, but moving on. So once I decided, so I, I, I pretty much planned on the four Teslas being here. And so the way I decided to attack the space is to do a spam Melunion. And the way I did that is if you look at this base, uh, it's kind of got a natural pathing. If I spam up here for my loons to just go ahead and engage into the core, they'll kind of split up this way. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to exploit that. So the only real thing that I needed to take care of is this archer tower. Because once I took care of that, I knew my any loons that I would send from the top would go straight down as well. Right, and I guess it's just and, like it's just like a hog attack. Um, and I, for the life of me, I don't know why this doesn't translate easily for me, but it doesn't. Uh, I understand hog pathing, and balloons are going to behave very similar, if not the exact same. But some for some reason, it's so hard for me to think about balloon pathing as opposed to hog pathing, and I don't know why that is, but you have to do it. Yeah, so whenever you're doing a Lelunian attack, the first step uh, that I, we mentioned earlier is identify where the Teslas, you think the Teslas are. The second step is to think about the loon pathing, but also think about the lava hound pathing. Uh, so the lava hound pathing always has to align with the loons. And what I mean by that is, let me clear this up. Let's say the four air defenses are over here. Okay. Uh, just for example, if I send in a Lava Hound here, the next direction that it's going to travel is here as soon as that air defense goes down. Right. And then after that, it's going to go down here. Mm -hmm. And then it'll finally work out this way. 
Um, and I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible. But if I deploy, let's say I just two-figure deploy all my loons at this spot, and I didn't take care of anything else. Well, these loons are going to go here, and these loons are going to go down. So this entire group of loons no longer has protection. Okay. And this is, uh, this is me just dumbing it down, but you need to make sure your loon and lava hound pathing is exactly the same as they travel through a base. Okay, that makes sense. Is that, is that where the sort of uh, clockwise or counterclockwise deployment comes from? Is that you're sort of trying to keep those loons in protected area, for lack of a better term? Yeah, so that's, that's why that, that clockwise and counterclockwise deployment works so effectively. Is what, what happens is with your heroes or your hybrid part of your base, you cut off a little section. What you've effectively done, you've effectively done is uh, you've cut off the ring. So what happens is when you deploy your hounds, they'll travel around the base, and your loons travel around the base with them. Okay. Okay. So on this base, the reason why that counterclockwise or that clockwise deployment doesn't work is because all four air defenses are together. Um, if you if you click on them, they cover each other really well, yeah. and so the timing is really hard to to, to do to deploy a lava hound, um, and then. To, to spread loons behind it. Yeah, definitely. And so this is where spam the loonian comes into play is whenever there are clumped up defenses or clumped up air defenses, you need to exploit it as, as best as possible and reduce the amount of time that your loons have to travel. Yeah, travel, it's just like in a holo, travel time on loons is huge and uh, you don't want them just working their way back and forth, back and forth. It needs to be a uh, steady forward progress, I guess, is the way to say it. Yeah. So what, what I ended up doing is uh, I decided to send two lava hounds in this direction and two lava hounds at this direction. Um, and what these four lava hounds are doing are they're going to be absorbing any types of air mines or traps in this entire area. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that air mines, the red air mines, are the most uh, effective things in destroying loons because uh, loons clump up, and so you have to make sure those lava hounds are absorbing those red air mines. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the reason for put, putting them in at different locations, different angles, is to try to maximize their coverage of what they're going to soak up. Yes, precisely. And so once you have taken care of all those trap locations you can go ahead and safely deploy loons from each of these angles and what i did is if i if i go ahead and take this archer tower out first i, I don't have to worry about the pathing um when i deploy any loons up here because uh they'll actually split up these loons will go this way and this, these loons will go this way as long as there's no tesla here right if that makes sense yeah yeah kind of scribbling all over the place no i i, I know what you're saying i think the viewers will too yeah. So, sorry, I'm going to redraw. The next step is once I know these air defenses are going to go down, and this, this, is, this always happens, and unfortunately, regardless of how precise your deployment is, these two air defenses almost never go down at the same exact time. Right. Yeah, so one, one set of loons, either the left or the right, will travel faster deploy, depending on how early you deploy the left or the right side and when you place down the rages. Right, rages but, and all that. Yeah, so either all four lava hounds will collect here to the right or all four will collect to the left. But uh, in my particular raid, I think the left side goes down first. And so all four loons of... It's kind of bad line collect to the right AD and then they travel down to this AD. Right. Which is which is okay because all I really need protection from is the air defenses at this point because well, by this time the loons have come in and they're already in the core here working their way through the base. Uh, the other thing that's really important for Lava Lunian is to consider uh, and this is one of the things that I've had trouble with understanding when I first started Lava Lunian is understanding splash damage. Mm -hmm. uh, La Lu balloons have a, a 0 .05 splash damage range. 
And so if a loon comes here and drops, if more than one, if more than one loon drops a bomb, this wizard tower will take splash and get destroyed uh, along with any Teslas right here if it's possibly there. Okay. And what happens is if this, if this wizard tower goes down, um, then they no, no longer have the, the closest pathing is not to this wizard tower and they won't go to the left. They'll go straight into the core. Right, gotcha. Or to the sensor. Yeah, a lot farther yeah, to that cannon than it is the, just right to the inferno tower there. Yeah. But, so this is kind of the lucky part. Uh, this is really difficult to calculate. And so you, you should never rely on splash damage doing the, the destruction of a specific buildings. And so, I had actually planned for this. I, I wanted to make sure my loons don't veer off and go back to the, the outside to get these cannons. Mm -hmm. the same thing on the right side. So I wanted to deploy two loons from each of these sides. Right, just to uh, X that out and then that, that way there's no chance of your loons backtracking in essence. Yeah, exactly. But I kind of end up fat fingering all my loons up top and, and send them all on accident. And not saving the, these these two, uh, but I do still get really lucky because of the placement of my rages and the splash damage, so they don't have to go that way. Right. But I think in the planning stage, this is something you really do need to account for: is to cut off certain areas and, and make sure you cut off the pathing. Right. It just goes back to like we talk about. There's times that in uh, in hog attacks, we take out key defenses, and it's just for hog pathing. And the same thing applies. With uh, with loons because they're targeting uh, defensive buildings just like the hogs do, so you've got to account for that. Yeah, and you should uh, try to always. I, I tell this to all. I mean, we 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 all try to tell this to all of our members, is to try to account for every situation, every scenario. Uh, I mean, sh short of cheating, it's really impossible to tell where the Teslas are. Right. So you need to try to have a plan for every situation. Right. If it pops here, then I'll do this. But if it doesn't pop there, if it's in the core, like I think, the plan is this. But if one of them's over, you know, just have an idea. Okay, if if this happens, here's what I'm going to do. Just have it in your head. That way you, there's no panic. There's no uh, hesitation. It's just boom. Okay, there it is. Plan B. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay, and then so once they get to this core, I expect all my loons to kind of split up and hit the rest of these defensive buildings. And the nice thing about this base is the, the only, the remaining buildings that I have to worry about is this archer tower. Uh, and that's not going to be sufficient in taking out a group of loons. So the only real threats are these two wizard towers. Right. And it can be, on the back end of a, of a Laloon, it can be a threat because all your loons are going to be bunched up at that point. It's just the way it works. You can't, you can't keep them spread uh, all the way through a base. Yeah. So I, I was planning on, on dropping each of my heroes here, one here, one here, so that these wizard towers would fire on them. Mm -hmm. Or... Another technique is to save two more loons and deploy them on each side of these cannons. And so these loons are serving as distractions. Good. That, yeah, that's a good plan. Uh, unless there's something else you want to touch on that, I want to transition to talking about spells because, in my opinion, uh, spells that you bring in spell placement can be the, the difference in a three-star and not in uh, Town Hall 10 Maloon unit. It, makes, it seems like those uh, free spells have to be money. Uh, everything's got to be just right. Yeah. That's, that's a great point. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Uh, the reason why I decided... So most Lumoonian attacks, you're going to want to use a Golem hybrid um, to go ahead and breach the base to kill the Archer Queen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to go ahead and kill the Archer Queen in the Clan Castle. But in this specific base, the way it's laid out, uh, it was really easy for me to go ahead and, and, and skip that step, and I'm going to go ahead and explain why. If you go ahead and click the Archer Queen, yeah, you can you can see uh, you'll know. So everyone knows how the Archer Queen radius works. As soon as a troop enters this radius, mm -hmm. she's going to run over there, and because of her range, let's say a troop, the first thing that's going to enter her radius is my Lava Hound if I come out from this direction. Right. So what she's going to do is she's going to try to fight that Lava Hound, and she's going to move right next to this Inferno Tower. Yeah, because that's going to put her in range to shoot her bow, and she's only going to go as far as she has to to fire on that enemy. 
Yes, exactly. And so she's gonna fire. She's gonna stand right under this inferno tower and fire. And even though this lava hound does come closer, she's gonna stand right there for the remainder of the uh, until that lava hound explodes. Yeah. Yeah. And so th the reason why this is a, a really good technique is I'm already I'm already planning to drop my freeze here. The archer queen is like because of her DPS, she's almost like a fifth air defense. Yeah, so that... what I'm really getting out of this is I'm freezing an Inferno and I'm freezing two air defenses. Right, the air defense and the queen. And she's almost like a, a stronger air defense, honestly, because she shoots much faster and honestly probably has more DPS, depending on the level, obviously. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and so the only thing that I really need to worry about is timing. Like, if you, if you don't freeze early enough, then she's going to blow, blow up that Lava Hound very quickly. But on the opposite end, if you freeze too late... Wait, wait, sorry. If you freeze, don't, if too, you freeze early. too early, then um, your loons don't have time to travel and take out this Inferno. And the Inferno will take out all your loons. Right. By the time everything gets there, that's going to be doing the damage. Uh, that is your loons. Uh, the freezes wore off, and it's almost like it didn't happen. Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah, so the timing, the timing the, is the important. The other thing that I really need to be, you need to make sure is, uh, can you click the archer tower or archer queen radius again? Yeah. So I already said I was going to be sending my lava hounds in these directions. Uh, I need to make sure that the deployment is this one first. If I deploy this one first, then the queen is actually going to stand over here. Uh, if I deploy this one first, she's going to stand over the town hall. And same thing with this one. She's good gonna point. Yeah, right. I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Because yeah, she's going to so, the so first one in range right. is what she's going to lock onto, and she's going to stay on that troop until it's dead, or she's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 the order of deployment is one, two, three, four. Okay. Or actually, it could is, this is, could be one, this can be two, depending on how you're planning to deploy your lens. But uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, and quickly behind that, you need to make sure you spam your loons. Uh, now, but, on this one, do you do you deploy all of your uh, lava hounds and then your loons, or are you deploying one side loons and then the other side loons? I, I'm deploying all my lava hounds and then all my loons. Okay. Uh, you can technically, depending on how your army composition is made up, you can send in all your loons first and then send in your lava hounds after. Mm -hmm. uh, I That will keep your lava hounds alive for a little bit longer because the initial damage is coming on the, the initial loons. Whereas if you deploy your lava hounds first, the initial damage is always going on your loons or your lava hounds. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to favor the Lava Hound deployment first, always. Well, and, and really, the more we learn about this, I mean, you you want your Lava Hounds to bust. You just want them to bust at the right time, which is hard to do. But in the end, you want all your Lava Hounds to be exploded. Yeah. Yes, you do. You, you, they're they're magic for, magical for cleanup. And uh, one of the things that uh, Supercell doesn't advertise is Lava Hounds, when they explode, do a significant amount of damage right below them. Right, almost like a balloon crashing splash damage. Yeah, and so they're they're doing AoE damage below them, and, which is really nice when there's the Clan Castle troops or an Archer Queen below them. Um, and it's also nice because when the Lava Hound explodes, uh, unlike any other troop, the, the Lava Pups do an instant damage. They get their first attack off almost immediately. Oh, I didn't know that, that's cool. Uh, and also, I've seen I've seen a lava hound explode and uh, finish off a very weak uh, air defense. You know, it's it's on its last leg. Maybe a balloon crashed and it almost took it out, and then boom, that lava hound goes, and there goes the air defense. Yeah, I've seen that too. It's it's a pretty cool thing to see. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's go back to the spell the spell placement. I'm, I'm going to be throwing down a freeze here, and I, I also said I'm going to be throwing down a freeze here. Uh, the other nice thing about the way this base is set up is if you click the clan castle, it's almost exactly the same uh, leash as the Archer Queen. Uh, so the first thing that's going to breach this clan castle radius is the the lava hound that I sent from up here. And so the clan castle troops are actually going to be running right under where exactly where I want them to be. 
Right, at least a portion of them are going to get hit by that freeze uh, right along with the Queen, the Infernal Tower, and the Air Defense. So that freeze there in particular is a, a tremendously high-value freeze. Yeah. Uh, what ends up happening in the live raid is because I, I deploy my second Lava Hound very quickly, they, the, the Clan Castle ends up splitting up. I brought a Lightning just in case there is a grip of Wizards. So the, the two biggest threats for Spam Lemunian is an all clan castle filled, uh, a clan castle filled with all wizards, or a clan castle filled with a dragon. Yeah. Uh, if this guy had a dragon, then this raid would have just have gone to absolute shit. But I got pretty lucky, and we, we, I think this base, I don't recall, was attacked. No, it was not attacked. No, I don't think it was, but you could call it luck. But also, you know, you have some idea. Once you have some attacks start and, and you have a few a few going, maybe a few Town Hall 10s have already been hit, people tend to sort of, I mean, if, if they've got dragons, usually a lot of them have dragons. So there was some scouting involved, just not, you know, you didn't know for 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, I think this clan castle ended up having a witch, at archers, and a few wizards. Mm -hmm. That's actually the best for Spend Lelooning is... Usually the witch and the archers will do very little to your raid, right? Uh, because they just don't do enough DPS. It's just the wizards that you really need to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, if if a bunch of wizards came out, uh, you have to watch and, and time your freeze that way. That way they don't pop your lava hounds way too early. Yeah, definitely. Because a group of uh, level six wizards can do can do some damage to any troop. Yeah. If I knew this guy had all archers in a CC, I probably wouldn't even take a lightning, and I would have opted for a third rage. Yeah. But so the way this is deployed is I, I want to you want to drop your rages here and here. Um, that way you can propel your moons to catch up with your lava hounds. Uh, the other thing is you need to take down these two infernos as soon as possible. Right, so really, that's the that's the crux of your uh, of your rage placement is that you want those uh, infernal towers going down ASAP. So getting your loons there as quickly as possible is is paramount. That's what that's what you've got to focus on. So that's why you're expending your your rages where that where you are. Yeah, and this the way the rage placement has to be precise so that you're getting maximum area of effect as they're coming in but it has to be encompassing the the inferno tower on the edge the opposite side of the edge right you want them sitting in it while they're dropping bombs on the inferno tower uh, just to take it out that much quicker yeah exactly okay cool so uh that's that's all great i mean that that up to this point the plan's awesome so from there are you, at, are you on autopilot what's what's left rex when you once you get to that point so I uh, I ended up taking wall breakers. I, I like to take two wall breakers and um, and a few wizards when I'm doing spam Lelunian. That way, you you really never know what's going to go on in a raid. Um, and we want we this was the first attack, so I wanted to make sure I got at least a two star. Right. Uh, and so there are a couple ways to use your heroes. One, you can use your heroes on the side and clear out all this trash. So. The, the lava pups and the lava hounds and the loons will never come to the left and the right side. You mm -hmm. can separate them out. The other, the other alternative is I, I ended up saving them. I used them down here because I knew I was going to get a three star. But my plan was if, I, if this top portion of the raid did not go well, I wanted to use wall breakers and my heroes to come down and snipe this town hall. So right. at least getting the two star just in case. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, I'm glad you brought up heroes because this is a thing that people uh, ask a lot and I, it's something that I think needs to be talked about. Uh, obviously, in the raid that you've laid out for us, heroes are not paramount. Uh, you could probably do this with level 15, level 20 heroes uh, because the attack is not... Uh, you're not making that dive that you see a lot of people doing with a golem, uh, taking out the queen, an air defense, maybe a, an inferno tower. But... Hopefully in the near future we'll have some good uh, Golo, uh, excuse me, Golo loons to to show people and talk about that. But what level of hero do you feel like you need 
uh, when you're doing these town hall ten attacks, and you, and you are going to have to do that dive with a golem and with your heroes. Yeah, so this is, I, I can't say I have the most experience and I've seen enough attacks to see what level heroes you need exactly, but uh, there are a couple of factors that really depend. Um, one, it's going to depend on what level the enemy heroes are. So okay. if the enemy has very underleveled heroes, then of course your heroes um, don't have to be as high. But you definitely cannot take in level 10 heroes and expect to get a three-star hero. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would say the minimum. So for level... Because there's a lack of... Uh, because there's so much variability in defense levels and a lack of, of, of quantifying it, um, and there's um, just not enough distinction with the, the value amounts, mm -hmm. uh, I would say level 1 infernos require at least level 20 heroes, 2020. Okay. Um, I want to say level two Inferno bases are probably 25, 25. And then would you just st um, stick with that and say level three, you probably need 30, 30 to, to deal with something like that. If you're, if you're making the dive, he, that is. Yeah. I, I, I have not seen anyone be able to completely three star a max base without at least level 30, 30 heroes. Yeah. And obviously just like anything, the higher level your heroes get, the, the, the more leeway you have, the easier it's going to be for you. Not that three starring a max town hall ten is easy, but if the enemy has max heroes, max if it's a maxed out town hall ten, you probably need close to max level heroes to have a realistic chance of getting in there, getting done what you need to to three star that base. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the other, the other, the fact is, is as your heroes go up, the they're not quite exponential, but the growth, the increments of hero gains increases significantly. So uh, a, a hero going from level 19 to level 21 is not as significant as a hero going from 25 to 27, even though they're both two levels apart. Right. This, the amount of growth and damage increase that you get an HP increase is much more significant than this increase. Right, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And and sort of like what we, you know, you and I have talked about it before, and then we put, I put out the uh, butterfly effect video. It could, it could, I've seen it happen. It can literally, literally be that last shot. So one or two upgrades uh, got that queen one more shot off, and that inferno tower went down, or that air defense went down. Where had it not, a totally different attack not a three star any longer uh, everything goes differently so those small <laughs> adjustments can make a big difference on your right yeah you're completely right and just from your the, the lighter your very last live attack your archer queen had just a sliver of health yeah uh if she wasn't the level she was she would not have knocked out as many defenses and um, cleaned up as well as she did excellent point the per perfect example uh She's you know level twenty. If she was even level nineteen, I think that mortar would have taken her out, and I might have ran out of time and got a two star as opposed to the three. Everything else being exactly the same. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, and to even take that a little bit step further is if she was level nineteen, she actually would not even have gone to that mortar because uh, she she would have done less damage. Good, po getting that, good point. <laughs> and, we, and we're getting exactly into what the butterfly effect's about. And as you get higher level, I think it's it's as important, if not more important than it is at like Town Hall 9. Uh, every little, I mean, the, the margin of error on a, on a max Town Hall 10 uh, is, is just a razor thin margin. There's no room for error. Every little bitty shot, every hit point counts. Yeah, you're exactly right. The only things that don't really gain any, any much growth are, is the troop levels. So yeah. you just need to make sure you have the highest and maximum amount of troops and then try to uh, I tell all my Town Hall 9 um, clan mates to only focus on the heroes because that's when the hero growth really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. And you're growing so much. from. I mean, think about it. At Town Hall 8, you've got a max level 10 Barb King, no Archer Queen. And then from there to Town Hall 9, you can take both of them all the way to 30. It's... It's a tremendous uh, growth and tremendous difference. But we're getting off track. It's our fault. We always do yeah. it. Uh, but uh, this base here, again, you laid out the way you did it. Heroes, not not make or break, really. Uh, the whole attack was about spell placement and, and troop pathing. And I think you, you laid out a really good plan for that uh, to, to wreck this base. Yeah. Um, and 
I don't want this video to go too long, but I just want to talk about one more quick point. Yeah. Is when you're uh, looking at a base and analyzing it, make sure you always look at the air defense places. Say, let's for example, the air defenses were at these four locations. Mm -hmm. Then you would do the goal, like the regular goal alone, where you knock out the hero, well, knock out a section. But you see how a spam Lamunian, um, let's say if I was doing a spam Lamunian on this type of base, and I was sending in my Lava Hounds like at these angles, then the travel, the way they travel is different than if I were to do a hero knockout, and let's say this way. I, I, know, I no, longer have, no, no longer have that option to do a spam Lamunian because right. the pathing is different. Right. Sort of what you talked about earlier. All of you, anything that you deploy on the left side there is going to be exposed. There's no, uh, your your lava hounds aren't going to travel there. They're not going to protect them there. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to use the that wraparound works. method or the or the counterclockwise in that example method to to deploy to keep your loons safe and to keep them heading towards the core and get those inferno towers. Yeah, and so the loons and the lava hounds need to travel across the court simultaneously. If they're off times, then a lot of them, that's where you see a lot of the failures happening. Yep, yep, good point. All right, man, well, anything else before we check out this awesome replay? No, uh, that is all. All right, man, let's cue it up and see what uh, how this actually went down because it was a fun one to watch. Uh, like you said, just starting up top, a few balloons there just to knock out that archer tower. You don't want your uh, balloons being sucked towards that. Uh, then right there, boom, the lava hounds go down, the Teslas pop, but they get taken off really quickly because you were right behind your lava hounds with your balloons. Uh, as you as we talked about the pathing and then the timing on that uh, that freeze right there, the queen's down, the inferno's down, uh, all of it's down, and look at the splash damage coming in, just wrecking that right about the time the freeze wears off, uh, those inferno towers get wrecked, they're done, and look how fast this happens when you do it right. Uh, balloons have already made their way through. The Expos are down. They're facing right now the last two air defenses. Uh, one of them goes down, and now it's getting a little bit shaky because the last uh, Lava Hound went down, which is, again, we want that to happen, but he's got to get those balloons on there. Boom, right there. Last air defense goes out, and, and as Rex said, he drops his heroes down here towards the bottom. Uh, they're, they're tanking, basically, for the last few defenses that are, that are able to even hurt his air troops, uh, just that Tesla over there to the left. And after that, it is cleanup time. And look at all those lava pups running around. Uh, when you've got four uh, lava hounds and they all bust, you have a plenty of cleanup troops. And as you can see how fast this raid went, uh, Rex had no, no shortage of that uh, when everything was said and done. So awesome attack, Rex. Awesome breakdown, uh, great plan, and everything worked just like it was supposed to. Always a good feeling when that happens. Yeah, it's a great feeling when you get that three star, and I really hope a lot of people can take away the way you can uh, really break down a lava hound base and get three, th three and you, stars themselves. And you can, and like Rex said earlier, take it a step at a time, guys. Don't try to go to that top max town hall ten. Start at the lower town hall tens. Get your feet under you. Uh, get get a feel for the attack and work your way up. And you're gonna have success, and it's gonna be better. And Little by little, just like everybody else has to, you're going to get better and better at it, and you're going to take out higher and higher bases. Uh, so we encourage you guys to try it. Hopefully this video helped you some. Uh, Rex, anything you want to say before we go? No, that's all. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Jake and Rex from One Hive reminding you guys to suck less.